Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, today is going to be a mill demonstration, a very specific, very quick shortcut. But before I get there, just thought I might share something with you. Let's check the marker here. Yep, it's good to be back. Temporarily anyway, but here we go. Now today's demonstration is about how to turn a circle into a square. Simple, right? Uh, half a dozen steps involved, but I'm going to show you a way to cut that back. Now, if you want to know what size square material you can make out of any given round stock, the magic number is 0.70711. Take the diameter of the material times 70711, and that is the biggest square you are going to get out of that. Now, how do you know this? Well, let's just find the center of that circle first. Theoretically, the center of the circle. Strike a line 45 degrees through the center of that circle. And there is a reason for this. Forty-five degree triangle. Now, if you do the exact same thing on the top, you have a square. So in order to find this leg right here, it is the diameter times 70711, which is a function of 45 degrees. Forgive me, I don't have that chart right in front of me at this moment. But the diameter times 70711, function of 45, will give you either of the two legs. Now in a square, assuming all four legs are the same, that would define your square. What does this tell you if you're looking at a piece of material and you have to do this? How do we do this? Well, all this material has to be removed, right? Or does it? What I'm going to show you today is a technique for creating what I call a grip rail. You're going to take this material and you are going to do this to this material. That is step number one. This all comes off. You then flip the material over and you squeeze it on that grip rail. This now allows you in your milling process to deck the top of the material, side mill two sides, and then flip it back over and deck the top off and you have a square. Very quickly, as a matter of fact, because you can do multiple sides. And if you're making a truly square part, then you can do five sides and not just one at a time. So let's pop a piece of material in there real quick, come up with some numbers for a given diameter, put a grip rail on it, and I will show you exactly how fast this can be. It's a good one to keep in your mental toolbox. Very helpful. That number two, 70711. Let's do it. First step in the process is to find the top of the material. Make sure that you have sufficient projection above the vice jaw. For that, I'm just putting a space under it. After doing the math on this particular part, I know that I have approximately 300 thousandths to come off of here. Or what does that translate to? Millimeters. 300 thousand. Let's call it 7.7 .7 millimeters coming off. So, knowing that, I'm going to go a little bit less so that when I flip the part over, and this becomes my third operation surface, I have cleanup material. It will make sense in a second. I'm going to bring the cutter down until it just about touches the OD of the material, and I'm going to lock the spindle. Lock the quill. There we go. Move it back and forth until you see a witness mark. That's about all you want to go. The little chips would indicate that you're making contact. Leave it there. I've zeroed my Z-axis dial, which is the up and down. I'm going to come down, let's say, 270. With the cutter well into the material, I'm going to take the cutter and I'm going to move to the back of the part and I'm going to creep the part into the cutter until I have a witness line running down the diameter. 
I'll zero my digital at that point and then repeat the process on the front using the center line feature on the digital. I'll hit the center line at that point and I will know that I'm directly over the center. Knowing the diameter of the cutter and the diameter of what you, or, or the distance of what you're looking to cut, make it offset accordingly. Watch for the scratch on the back of the part. If you have real good eyes in the cameras giving me what I'm looking at the fruit through the viewfinder at, we have dust back here, meaning contact. Zero the y-axis right now. Do the same thing for the front. As soon as you're satisfied, you have the same footprint front and rear. Center line function on the digital or split the number on the dial. It tells me my center line is right here. Now, depending on the feature that you're looking to make out of this part when you're done doing this, you can regulate how thick or how thin you want the web, but it's the depth that's critical so that it doesn't interfere with the true square profile when you're done. I'm going to go 500 off center each way, 12.7 millimeters. And let's see what that looks like. Now don't forget to add in the radius of the cutter if you want something robust to hold on to. So I'm going to go 750 off center each way, 750. Now if you feel that the amount of footprint that that cutter gives you is sufficient for the next operation, then quit there. If you want more to hold on to, well then you just have to move closer to center on the Y. Do not change the depth. Now, knowing what we know, since we didn't go down as far as we can from the cut contact surface to that plane, we can actually register on that plane to use as parallels. Even if these are a little bit skewed, it's not going to matter at this point. You can use them to register. Now you can move the cutter down to just above contact with the jaws. Set it however you have to. Now that is ridiculously close, but let's see what happens. You now have access to the front of the part, the back of the part, left and right sides of the part. All in one setup. I'm going to side mill it. Let's do it. Okay, to be fair, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the edge of the tool with the complete side now. I'm going to dust and dust. You no longer have the same Y center line, so be careful. Don't get caught like that. I'm jumping the gun here and almost, almost set a bad example. Let's dust the sides, reset, then we can move. Once both sides are cleaned up, raise the cutter and deck the top the same amount that you remove from the side. And if you want to cheat, you can actually use the radius of the material as the break edge on the square and save yourself a deburring operation. That's it. 
geometry lesson for another day. And yes, I know I could be using a bigger cutter, so those of you that are going to comment that, please don't. The end of the part having not cleaned up because of the raw material that I picked, you can see what I meant by use the stock diameter as the break edge. This is nice and sharp, but there's the 45 right there. We'll get a closer look at it on the bench. And those of you paying attention, I basically climb cut the outsides first, driving the burr in. Anytime you want to cut plastic and the rotation of the cutter is forcing the burr out, well, you're setting yourself up for a little bit of bench time after the fact. So let's flip it over, put it on parallels, finish up. Part is comfortably positioned on the parallels. Let's deck off the rail and go just subsurface to what we left behind and all will end well. Let's do it. Uh, now I cheated on this last side and I stayed approximately 10 thousandths away from the finished depth because I wanted to use the diameter of the material to put the break edge on. Alright, let's take a quick look at the part. This is the top and two sides here that were done initially while clamped in the grip rail setup. The edge is right here, which is almost invisible. If you drag your fingernail on it, on this is Delrin. And I'm sorry that it's black. I didn't realize how tough that would be to catch that. But the bottom side, I stayed 10 thousandths away, and we will be able to catch the reflection of the break edge. That nice line right there. That's the radius of the original stock. And by planning your cut, you can actually break the edge before you ever have to actually use a file on it. And if you've got a bunch of parts to do, I can tell you it'd be a real time saver. That grip rail has come in extremely handy on a lot of different jobs and a lot of different materials and it's something that I swear by and I do use. I hope you find that useful. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a shorty. I did this video standing on one foot. Yes, I am not 100% yet, but we're giving it our best shot. Thank you for all the well wishes. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for all the views. Use that. It works. Thanks for watching. Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.